Hey guys, welcome back to Canada Cinema. I'm Amanda, otherwise known as AMX NDA Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. I know I've been away for a while, but that's because I was covering the Toronto International Film Festival and I had an absolute blast. There were a mixture of in-person screenings and online screenings, and it was just a dream come true for me. This is the seventh time that I have attended this festival, but it is the the first time that I went as accredited press. So it was a big deal for me, a wonderful 10 days. I met some wonderful people and I watched some kick ass movies. I'm so excited to give you a ranking of my top five. These movies were outstanding at this festival. So coming in at number five, the most mind-blowing movie of the festival. And that is Titan by Julia Ducourneau. She blew me away with this movie. Now, it was an in-person screening. I didn't know that Theater 12 was actually an IMAX theater, which will come in handy for another film on my list. So this one, I was literally in this movie. I was in Titan and it blew me away. She is the same director of Raw and Raw was at Midnight Madness, I think two or three years ago at TIFF as well. And because of how insane Raw was, I still haven't seen it because I can't deal with cannibalism. I literally can't after watching Cannibal Holocaust in my university course for a horror lecture. Can't do it, can't do it. So we had people calling the ambulance <laughs> because they were fainting in this particular one. I get it. I understand why people would faint after watching Titan because, oh my God, oh my God. I literally cannot give anything away, but I will say that the score is absolutely incredible. The camera work, the cinematography, beautiful. It looks so completely polished and you have body horror in this particular film that really just it's in your face. And what I love that Ducourneau does is that there's, it's so, it, it, there's so much tension that she creates. There's so much tension because you are literally strapped in for this ride with our lead. And she's, she gives a fantastic performance as well, but I was just floored with the concept of Titan. And I think that Neon, which is the production studio, absolutely, killed it at TIFF this year with everything that they've they've dropped. So Titan is about this young girl who ends up getting into a car accident and she has to put a plate in her head. She has like spinal injury, all of that. So she has to have full body surgery essentially. And she is filled with either if it's titanium, whatever steel, metal, whatever was put to basically save her, she is filled with it. So she has an attachment to cars. Massive attachment to cars. So that's all I'm gonna say about that. Her connection to cars is what's at the surface. And that's where the horror comes in. And there's some great horror elements. Even if it isn't for you, I normally don't watch these type of films because there were moments where I was sitting there like, what is happening? And I had to like cover my eyes because I can't handle the anticipation of someone hurting another person, especially if I know that it's going to be brutal, it's going to be violent, it's going to be gory and graphic. I can't, I can't handle that. So it's the anticipation, but actually visually watching it, I'm okay. It's the anticipation, the tension that she just nails throughout this movie. And it is incredible Titan. It really is. And so we have the, the attachment to the car, the surface, as I said before, and I just went off on a tangent, it boils down to a father-daughter relationship or a father-son relationship. And that's where you get the emotional pull to these characters and why the third act is very important. It does run a bit long and it does lose its footing getting to that finale, but man, does it pack a punch. It is actually very well written. And I like the story afterwards when everything comes together. So Titan, number five from the festival because, oh my goodness. 
So good. Coming in at number four, we have Edgar Wright's Last Night in Soho with Thomas McKenzie, Anya Taylor-Joy, and Matt Smith and Sam Claffin, which I didn't even, I avoided the trailers. So the only people I kind of technically knew that were in this movie were Anya Taylor-Joy and, uh, and Thomas McKenzie. So again, this is a film where it's an experience. You have to enjoy the ride. I can't really go into details with you. All I'm going to say is that as a woman, this movie affected me. I could not sleep after watching it because of the storyline, what happens to the women in the story, the generational trauma again from women that we all feel for each other because we've all been in certain situations that still affect us to today and sometimes recent things can trigger those those memories so i i really love last night in soho for that reason the story is really really important i think and it is co-written by christy wilson carnes and edgar wright so we do have the female perspective in there and i think that there are some moments that if it if it didn't come from a woman writing it with Edgar Wright, then there would be some issues, of course, naturally, as I've seen, you know, people just not liking it, which is totally fair on on socials after watching it. So I completely understand that. But I I loved it. You know, Edgar Wright uses, you know, some Jello horror uh, elements and then he elevates it with his own signature. Edgar Wrightness, you know, he, we all know him. His needle drops are fantastic. He always has a wicked soundtrack throughout uh, his films. And this one's just a bit darker. I personally think that it's his best work yet. I really love the cinematography, the camera work, the the actual camera constantly moving. I really love that symmetry between the camera work, especially when Sandy, who is on Taylor Joy, and Ellie, Thomas and Mackenzie come together on, you know, on certain dream-like sequences. And I I really loved, loved the camera work in this. It was very fast-paced, very quick, very Edgar Wright. And he mixes so much into this. It's just one big mixture of, you know, psychological thriller. And, you know, you have those jello horror elements. And I just, oh man, last night in Soho without giving away the story, that twist ending, I personally really enjoyed. But it also has like an ending and then an ending and then an ending. So I think the second ending is where they could have just like chopped it off and it did overstay its welcome a bit at the end just because once you have too many endings and you had the perfect one and you keep going that's where you kind of lose the audience but apart from that visuals freaking stunning so good please watch last night in soho that is number four on my list coming in at number three we have pablo lorraine's spencer oh spencer is just i have no words for spencer i still don't have words for spencer and i wrote a review and i still don't have words for spencer kristen stewart gives one of her best performances she is very talented she has been very talented if you guys are just cluing in now you clearly have not watched her work in like personal shopper and clouds of sales maria and and so many other things because she's really interesting to watch and she has a stunning performance as princess diana in spencer so the thing about spencer is that you are watching princess diana when it's like 10 years into her marriage with prince charles you have a three day look at what her life was like at the palace in the royal family and it the entire focus is on her and i love that because everyone else just wasn't important it was just her and her kids and pablo lorraine made that so you can really connect with what she was struggling with she was struggling with so many different things but her kids her kids you know, they're the ones that kept her grounded. William and Harry are the ones that kept her there, kept her sane, kept her memory of what she once was, the person she once was, the kid inside her that wanted to be free and just 
live a normal life. So I think that Pablo Lorraine did an extraordinary job. I do like Jackie just a bit more than Spencer. This one felt like we were in a dream sequence with Princess Diana. There are some moments that you do have to suspend your disbelief and just take the ride with Pablo Lorraine there. It's very haunting. It feels like a ghost story. That's how haunting the score is by Johnny Greenwood. Absolutely phenomenal work. I had chills watching it, listening to that score. So there are great moments in Spencer. Again, I'm still thinking about it. I will, I won't shut up about Spencer. It is a beautiful film. And again, Kristen Stewart just will leave you in awe of what she's done. She's just absolutely stunning in this. So coming in at number two, I have what was my most anticipated movie of 2021, and that is Denis Villeneuve's Dune. I know, I know what you're thinking, Amanda, why the hell isn't this number one for you? But I had a better experience with another film. Don't get me wrong, Dune is still rated highly for me. I was very fortunate to watch on an IMAX screen for my first time. And again, I'm super grateful for the opportunity, uh, but believe what everyone is saying, Dune is massive. It is gigantic, it's big, it's loud, it's bold, it's in your face. It's beautiful to look at from the cinematography to the actual locations, to the costume design, literally, Everything is just so beautiful to look at. This cast puts everything into these performances. Possibly one of my favorite, if not my favorite, Timothy Chalamet performance as Paul Atreides. Each person on this cast had their moment to shine, especially Rebecca Ferguson, who, at, like, she slayed it as Lady Jessica. She's one of my favorite characters. After reading the book, I absolutely adore her. So I just love, love the way that Denis adapted this book. And it wasn't like overstuffed with political jargon, something that I have trouble with, especially watching Star Wars. It's just, it feels like gibberish to me sometimes, but the minimal dialogue that Denis puts into Dune helps it because he's showing you everything. It is a visual feast. That's what I can say. It's just beautiful to look at. Hans Zimmer's score, if you haven't listened to it and you're waiting to experience it with the film, actual chills gave me chills because the way it accompanied certain scenes it elevated it and made you connect with these characters and this storyline so with dune man it just it really got me and after two and a half hours you sit there and you're like denis did that you feel like this is an epic this is something that we haven't experienced in a very long time probably that same feeling from lord of the rings return of the king i would say watching that in theaters it's the last time where you could feel that grand of a scale to watch this film on the big screen so that for me dune is just it is amazing and uh, i can't wait to watch it again and again and again and again very excited for everyone else to see it it's really good so if you guys have seen dune if you haven't seen dune i i'm here to talk about it i have been promoting it for a year and a half now and we're finally finally getting it october 22nd so i'm really excited for dune and now going into my number one spot this really surprised me i did not expect this at all to be my number one I have always been a fan of Sir Kenneth Branagh and I was very, very lucky to snag a ticket to watch Belfast in theaters. I woke up at 6 a.m. to get that ticket and oh, it was worth it. It was worth it. It became my favorite of the festival. Like, look at this, right? So Sir Kenneth Branagh had been working on Belfast for a long time. It's more of like a passion project for him because it's such a personal story. Not only does it deal with, you know, re certain religious aspects in the 60s, especially in Belfast about, you know, Catholicism and being a Protestant and having that, you know, those type of conversations uh, throughout, but it deals with 
family issues in the 60s. It deals with life and death and loss and, and love and all of that. So I just, I really loved what he did with it. And it's all through the eyes of little buddy uh, who I personally think, obviously, is little Kenneth Branagh. But it wasn't so much like the family aspects that really got to me. It wasn't, you know, the political conversations. It wasn't the religious conversations. It was, it was more of like everything happening through Buddy's perspective and what he's seeing and the way that he approaches certain situations. So because we know that it's Sir Kenneth Branagh, and it's a very personal and emotional story for him. When we saw that he was just so excited about like the new Star Trek on screen or, you know, his personal memories were coming through in Belfast. And what I love the most, what got me really emotional was his ode to cinema. And, you know, seeing something on the screen for the very first time and that feeling of like, I'm gonna escape into a new adventure. like he really, really captured those beautiful moments. And that's why I absolutely fell in love with Belfast. And the cinematography is stunning. The camera work is really good. And it's in black and white, it is, you know, and he, he really played around with some different things. And I, and I appreciate that um, from a filmmaking standpoint. So even though the story is, you know, it's straightforward, it's very simple, I just loved what he did with it. I loved what he did with it. And it was him honoring that one street that he used to live on. So I, I loved Belfast. Jamie Dorn and Katrina Belf, they were beautiful. They had great chemistry. Katrina Belf gave a stunning performance. It was really, really strong. Slightly better than Jamie, but Jamie had to kind of play more reserved, which is fine, but Katrina Balf really held everything together as as Buddy's mom. So Sierra and Hins and Judy Dench, again, as the parents, the grandparents, they were really cute together. And I just love the dynamic. And I love that the kids were talking about Catholicism and religion. And I, I love that they were having those conversations as well. So Belfast is up there for me. So, TIFF was a lot of fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will have these reviews up at a later date as well, closer to their release dates. Uh, again, you can find all of my reviews, my TIFF coverage at candidxcinema.com. The links are gonna be below. If you guys enjoyed this video and you enjoyed my rankings, please like and subscribe. You can always find me over at AMX NDA Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. I love award season. I love festival season. Come chat with me about all these amazing upcoming movies. I'll catch you guys next time. Keep watching movies.